odd mood analysis of Wilkinson bar divider. Uh, in the previous video, we have introduced what is mean by Wilkinson bar divider, and we said that for the analysis of Wilkinson bar divider, we are going uh, to divide it into two modes of operation, even mode and odd mode, and by superposition of these two modes, we can obtain the performance of Wilkinson power divider. And we have already in the previous video studied uh, the even mode analysis of Wilkinson power divider. Now we are going to study the odd mode analysis of Wilkinson power divider. Then we are going to combine the even and odd mode solutions uh, to obtain the total solution of Wilkinson power divider. As we said in the previous video, uh, the equivalent, the normalized equivalent circuit for Wilkinson power divider, it can be represented as shown here. Uh, in this case, we have a characteristic impedance equal one. Uh, looking from board 2 and board 3. Uh, these transmission line sections are connected to uh, bar divider sections with characteristic impedance Z. And we have proved that the, the normalized value of Z is square root 2. And the length of these sections is lambda over 4. And they are connected to terminated transmission line equal 1. And this transmission line equal one can be divided into two parallel uh, resistances of normalized impedance equal to such that this barrel combination would be equivalent to one. For the case of odd mode analysis, we are assuming that board two is excited by a voltage source VG2 equals 2V0 and uh, the board three is excited by a voltage source of the same amplitude but out of phase from board 2, so it is minus 2v2, and uh, by these two excitation, it can be noted that the voltage at the board v2 has the same magnitude but out of phase of the voltage at board 3. This means that this positive value and this equal negative value, there will be a current going from the positive to the negative in this side. Also, if we follow the same as the propagation along the bar divider uh, line sections, the voltage at this terminal will be positive and the voltage at this terminal will be equal and negative. So, positive and negative here. So, there will be current passing from here to here. Actually, this is short-circuited and also here, short circuit, it means that the potential of this point must equal the potential at this point. And because this is positive and this is negative, it would not be equal except to zero. So, actually, uh, to make this voltage positive and this voltage negative, and they are connected to through uh, a short circuit, this means that the potential between them will reach zero, so this would be zero. Zero or short circuit. So this terminal, it can be replaced by a short circuit. In a similar way, if you look at the potential here, if this is positive V and this is negative V, so at the midpoint here, it would be the mid value. The mid value between positive and negative value is zero. So the voltage here is zero. The voltage zero is equivalent to ground plane. This means that we can replace this point by a ground and this point by a ground. And actually this ground will divide the circuit into two uh, equal circuits. One the upper part and the lower part. And we can solve only one of the two parts and the other would be uh, of the same analysis. So, for the odd mode analysis, the equivalent circuit or the resulting equivalent circuit for half of the Wilkinson bar divider would be a voltage source 
of two V node connected transmission line or normalized uh, transmission line or transmission line of normalized characteristic V one uh, to V two, and this V two would be connected to a resistance of the resistance R over two connected to ground. And this would be connected through a transmission line of characteristic impedance Z or length lambda over 4 to a short circuit. And after this short circuit, there is a connected transmission line section of characteristic impedance or normalized characteristic impedance 2. Okay. Uh, it quite appears that the main difference between the even mode and odd mode is that in the even mode, this was open circuit and this was open circuit. But in odd mode, these terminals are short circuit. Alright? Now, uh, the input impedance seen from this transmission line section, actually this short circuit. So, the effect of these two is uh, zero, because it is not included. If I'm talking about a short circuit barrel with a resistance, it will be a short circuit. The input impedance of a transmission line section of characteristic impedance Z and length lambda over 4 and this transmission line section is terminated by short circuit. So we are talking about short circuited lambda over 2 transmission line. If you remember, uh, Z input of a short circuited line is JZ node 10 beta L and if beta L or if L equals lambda over 4, beta L it would be infinity. So this means that the input impedance seen from here is infinity. This input impedance infinity or open circuit is parallel to R2. So the parallel combination here is actually R over 2. So the total impedance seen is R over 2. To make this input impedance match it to a transmission line section of characteristic impedance 1, this means that the value R over 2 must equal 1. Or, in other words, the value of R must equal 2. So, it, this means that the required impedance between the two arms of the bar divider section should equal 2 multiplied by the value of the characteristic impedance Z0. That's what we are seeing. Here, for mode, uh, for odd mode, where the voltage Vg2 equals minus Vg3, Vg2 equals minus Vg3, equals 2V naught. So, the voltage V2 would equal minus V3. And there is a voltage null along the middle of the circuit. If this is positive and this is negative with the same value, there is a voltage null at the middle of the circuit. We can then bisect or divide this circuit by grounding it at two points of the mid point of the mid plane. At this point and this point, we are going to replace these two points by a ground. Now, looking into port two, we see that an impedance of R two. We are looking from this point. We see impedance R two. Why? Since the barrel connected transmission line is lambda over 4 short circuited transmission line. Lambda over 4 short circuit transmission line, it has input impedance infinity. Infinity parallel to R over 2, it would be R over 2. And so look at an open circuit at board 2, which is the transmission line section. Thus, board 2 here will be matched for odd mode excitation if we select the value of R to be 2 such that R over 2 it would be 1 so in this case the value of R would be matched to the transmission line at port 2 then the value V2 here if R is 2 the value of V here it would be V0 it would be 2 V0 multiplied by 1 over 1 plus 1 so it would be V0 on the other hand, the voltage at board 1, because at board 1 it is grounded, so the voltage here is 0. So V1 in this case is 0. Right?
This means that for this mode of excitation, all power would be delivered to R over 2. So all the power is going to this resistance because there is no power is going to this side. With none is going to port 1. So in the even mode, some power is going from port 2 to the port 1. But in odd mode, all the power will pass through the resistance R over 2. All right. Now, let us see what will be the situation if we are feeding such Wilkinson power divider from board 1. Why? Board 2 and board 3 are terminated by a normalized impedance 1. In this case, we have input impedance uh, with normalized impedance 1 connected to the source to board 1. And this would be connected to two branches. Each branch has a characteristic impedance z, uh, square root 2 and this would be connected to a equivalent characteristic impedance 1 or normalized characteristic impedance 1 because of the symmetry of the two arms the bar divided here it would have the same phase between these two points this means that there is no current will flow through uh, the barrier resistance of impedance 2 because the potential here would be equal to the potential here this means that we can remove this impedance from our calculation because there is no current passing through the resistance uh, in the case of excitation from port 1 right now let us see what is the input impedance from branch 1 and the input impedance from branch 2 actually you have here a characteristic impedance square root 2 and the length is lambda over 4 and this characteristic impedance square root 2 is terminated by load impedance equals 1 as we have done before the input impedance seen at the input or at the terminal here it would be z squared over z load so z squared is uh, square root 2 square root 2 squared it would be 2 over 1 so it would be 2 so we are looking at the input impedance from this side it would be 2 and from this side it would be 2 and at this point they are connected in parallel so the total impedance seen at board 1 is 2 parallel to 2 so it would be 1 so the input impedance z input seen here it would be the barrel impedance of, of square root 2 to two power 2 which is simply 1 this means that in this case the board 1 it would be matched or in other words the reflection coefficient at board 1 is 0 so that's what we are seeing since V2 and V3 no current flows through the resistor normalized value uh, 2 uh, so it can be removed and we studied these two parts as I have mentioned okay all right so from this slide we can conclude that this design for the Wilkinson bar divider has s11 equals 0 all right and from the even and odd analysis we obtain that the input impedance here the input impedance here at the even mode equals 1 this means that the reflection coefficient at board 2 is 0 and because board 2 is symmetric to board 3 so in the even circuit also the board 3 will be matched so in this case both S22 and S33 for the even mode are 0 for the even mode we have proved that the voltage at board 1 is j v naught square root 2 while the voltage at board 2 is v naught similarly the voltage at board 3 for the even mode it was v naught right on the other hand for the odd mode for the odd mode the input impedance seen at board 2 z input for odd mode also equals 1 
this means that it is matched for the input or the characteristic impedance one this means that also s22 for the odd mode is zero and in a similar way because s33 is a symmetric but with a negative sign so also also s33 it would be zero for the odd mode the voltage at board one was zero and the voltage at board two was v naught so also for uh, the voltage at board three it would be minus v naught because it is anti-symmetric okay uh, on the other hand when the feeding was from board one we have the input impedance is one over two multiplied by square root two to the power two which is one so the input impedance here equals the characteristic impedance of the transmission line this means that s11 equals zero from this we can conclude that for the present design of the Wilkinson bar divider which is based on two transmission line sections of normalized characteristic impedance square root two and length lambda over four we have s11 s22 s33 r0 or in other words it is matched from all boards right so it is matched now if you are interested to find out the value of s21 or s12 in this case uh, to find out uh, the voltage at port 2 with respect to the voltage at port 1 when the voltage at port 3 is 0 so we are going to add the even and odd solutions in this case the total voltage excited at board 2 it would be 4 v naught and the total voltage excited at board 3 it would be 0 and the total voltage excited at board 1 is 0 so by summing uh, the even and odd solution we can obtain the total voltage for the Wilkinson bar divider at board 1 due to the total voltage as the Wilkinson bar divider due to board 2 so this is V1 over V2 V1 over V2 is actually S12 and because uh, the circuit is reciprocal S12 would equal S21 now from the value of V1 even it is JV naught square root 2 plus V1 odd 0 over V2 even V naught plus V2 odd V naught so we have minus JV naught square root 2 over 2 multiplied by V naught V naught will be eliminated with V naught so the remaining part will be minus J over square root 2 this means that the value of S12 equals the value of S21 equals minus J over square root 2 by following similar steps uh, but instead of adding we are going to subtract we can obtain S13 equals S31 equals exactly minus J over square root 2 so in this case both S12 and S21 S31 S13 all of them will have the magnitude minus j over square root 2 uh, that actually what I'm talking about S13 and S32 from the symmetry of boards 2 and 3 uh, is the same as S12 and S21 on the other hand S23 and S32 is obtained by adding and subtracting the even and odd modes and because when we add the two modes uh, S2 uh, will have a magnitude while S3 equals 0 or subtracting S3 will have a magnitude while S2 equals 0 so in this case S23 equals S32 equals 0 because if one has a magnitude the other would be 0 so in this case due to the short and open by sectioning of uh, the even and odd sections uh, there is no relation or there is uh, no connection between the board 2 and board 3 this means that S23 equals S32 equals 0 now let us collect all these pieces together we can find out that S11 
equals 0. S22 equals S33 equals 0. This means that the three boards are matched. S12 equals S21 equals minus J over square root 2. So this is a bar transfer from board 1 to board 2. S13 equals S32 equals minus J over square root 2. This is the bar flowing from board 1 to board 3. And S23 equals S32 equals 0. This means that we have isolation between the two output boards. The two output boards are isolated from each other. And actually this isolation due to this shunt resistance. Actually, the power going from board 3, for example, it will reach to board 1. And the part which will go reaching to board 2 will be dissipated at the barrel resistance. On the other hand, if the bar is going from board 2, it will go some of the bar, some bar is going to board 1, and the other bar which was reaching to board 3 will be dissipated on the barrel resistance to Z0. So, in this case, uh, if all the boards are matched, then uh, there is no losses at uh, the barrel resistance. But if we have some mismatch, this uh, mismatch will introduce some reflection from board 2 or board 3, and this mismatch will be dissipated in the barrel resistance. This means that the Wilkinson power divider is uh, uh, reciprocal and uh, is matched. And if it is matched at all boards, it would be lossless. But if we have some power from the output boards, this power will be, some of this power will be dissipated in uh, the barrel resistor. So we can say that it is matched, reciprocal, but it is lossy in a special case when one of the output boards is not matched. Uh, by collecting uh, these is elements, is parameter elements, so the total scattering matrix of the Wilkinson power divider, it can be written as follows, minus g over square root 2, multiplied by 0, 1, 1, so S11 is 0, S12 uh, is minus g over square root 2, S13 is minus g over square root 2, uh, 1, 0, 0, here S21, S22, S23 is 0. There is no coupling between the outboards. All the outboards are isolated, which is an advantage compared with uh, the T junction. Uh, finally, uh, S31 is minus G over square root 2. S32 is 0. And S33 is matched is 0. Uh, note that when the divider is driven from board 1 and the outputs are matched, no power is dissipated in the resistor. If the power is going from board 1 and board 2 and board 3 are matched, so all the power will reach to uh, uh, the two output boards and there is no power is dissipated in the resistor. This can be seen here by uh, summing the magnitude squared of this column. If we are summing the magnitude squared of this column, we find it is 1. Uh, the magnitude here, 1 over square root 2 squared plus 1 over square root 2 squared is 1. So, the power going from board 1 will be divided equally between board 2 and board 3 and there is no power would be this way. On the other hand, if the power is going from board 2, it will reach half the power to board 1 and half the power will be dissipated in the resistance to Z0. If the power is coming from board 3, half the power will go to uh, board 1 and the other half of the power will be dissipated in the resistance. Alright? So, thus the divider is lossless when the output power are matched. And only reflected power from board 2 and board 3 or board 3 is dissipated in the resistor. And because S23 and S32 are 0, boards 2 and 3 are completely 
isolate which had which is a very important advantage with respect to conventional uh, T power divider okay all right now we have studied uh, Wilkinson power divider with equal power division ratio what will be the situation if we are talk about unequal power division by using Wilkinson power divider that what we are going to see in the next video okay all right